Hi everyone, Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. We're gonna we're in the studio today, and we're having a great time. We're actually gonna do some interesting um, work with um, a uh, local train station um, in my town. Um, I actually really like to draw and paint out on location as much as I can. Um, I think uh, earlier, probably like you know five or so years ago. Um, I, I did a little more um, plein air uh, drawing. I did a lot of drawing, and um, I used to like to you know, really enjoy going out to my local area. So here, I just um, I thought I'd bring. This is the local train station, Radburn Station, in, in Fairlawn, New Jersey, in the United States, and um, this is like a. Um, you know, an angled view of the of the train station in my town. So what I thought I would do is, um, I've drawn this in this style with like the angle and more of the um, a mixture of the front of the building and the sides of the building. And this is really an interesting uh, angle. Um, and also, I, I find this is a really. I'll move this here. This is an interesting angle. It's just, it's basically the. It's basically this part of the building here, this uh, face of this side of the building. So basically we're just turning the building this way. And then we're looking at it more on a st straight, straight angle here. So I'll back up the uh, camera here a little bit like that. So I chose a more simple angle for this and I guess the the um, idea here I wanted to kind of show is just having fun with um, the paints and, and the watercolor medium and coming up with um, different ideas on how to paint uh, like a, a building or a structure if you're doing uh, street streetscapes or landscapes um, and you're doing any kind of architecture. Um, I find that if you if we simplify things it, it can be a real advantage here. So, uh, as artists, you as an artist, you're you're going to want to try to make things more simple for yourself when you're maybe let's say plain air, you know, out in plain air painting, especially. Um, you'd want to make things more simplified for yourself. Um, so, like maybe trying to just capture a, a like a feel of the location and a feel of the structure that you might be painting and or whatever subject matter you're you're choosing to do. Um, so that's what I did here. I this is uh, I started this painting on location, and now we're back in the studio. So I've started it. I've got I picked out my colors when I was out on the lo on location. I selected all my colors as I started to create my painting, and of course I did the um, contour drawing of the uh, building, the train station. So let's continue on here, and I guess I wanted this just to be more of a um, uh, like a uh, insight into how I'm gonna continue to paint this. So I started it out in the field of course and so my colors are pretty much set and I'm very familiar with my colors. I use the same colors all the time for many many years now. I don't think I've changed my palette really at all since I've been painting so that's about 15 years or so of um, painting with the same colors. so I'm very used to them. I can just look at this and right away I just know all the colors here that I use pretty much and it would just be a matter of adjusting a little bit to um, keep everything you know pretty much even here um, with the um, color selections. So I wanted to show also this is a brownstone building which is beautiful so if you're ever out and you encounter like a brownstone building or a stone building we can come up with really interesting uh, colors and design approaches. Uh, brownstone tends to be um, like brickwork in a sense except the patterns are more irregular. The stones are all different sizes most often. Uh, some brownstones are um, buildings are um, more um, symmetrical and then others are more irregular. So stone stone uh, facades on buildings can be very um, irregular or sometimes they can also be somewhat uh, linear and more uh, I guess um, I guess modular um, in, in a sense. This this building, the the stonework on this building, the brownstones are irregular, but they do have a pattern. Or there, there's a lot of uh, 
they're they're done in coursings the stonework so let's let's get into into doing this here and we'll, we'll find that it's very fun we'll just go into some um, burnt umber here and some burnt sienna burnt umber burnt sienna and then some raw umber and we can just sort of go back in here and and just start putting in some color so this is a more light um, wash here like a middle middle tone to light and there's a light here so I want to make sure I keep this uh, I'm gonna keep this like a white white of the paper And I'll mix in some cool, so I'll also take some cerulean blue and but for the most part this is alizarin crimson also, we'll mix in some alizarin crimson with the uh, colors. <clears throat> and then as this starts to dry this first initial wash then we can go in with some darker paint and we could also do uh, the opposite we could even go with some darker tonal values like this burnt umber, burnt sienna cerulean blue and we can even do some some stones like this just some No, you know, this is an irregular brownstone feel, so um, it's not real definite, the patterns at all. Just a lot of rectangular patterns. So if we, if I look over here, most of the patterns I have are uh, rectangular stone shapes. So I would just keep doing the same idea. And just have a fun time with this. And So this is something where if you try this exercise and um, work this out on some watercolor paper, you can put this in a folder and just mark it as maybe uh, streetscapes or um, uh, architecture. And so if you practice on this just a little bit, maybe a couple hours, and you, you do something like this, you can put it in a, in a folder. And then if you're ever, um, ever creating a scene like this where there's some buildings and some brownstone, you can go back and look at that painting you did of the scene here that we're working on now and you'll kind of have already an idea of what colors you used and the patterns that you worked out so in, a sense, in essence you wouldn't have to go back and rethink everything you can just um, you can go back and just look at the folder and um, and then when you do that you'll have the information you need right there and you can just pick up in a sense where you left off saying okay I know what colors I used you can even write the colors down and then put a little color swatch you might take a um, watercolor paper and put down some colors and so here we would go back straight into that and then we're just making some rectangular shapes and like that. Some are larger, some are smaller, some are square, the shapes. Like that. A little splash. Keep it loose and fun. A couple splashes. Maybe some uh, yellow ochre. So it's a mix of colors and then some shapes here and there. So we wouldn't want to paint every block of stone. We would paint a few blocks of stone here and there. And then um, and then fill the rest in with interesting colors. So we could do like a square here. And you could let this dry a little bit and do a little more work. But I guess the idea is then, if you have this in your folder, let's say, 
And then you can just write in, you know, brownstone, brownstone building. And then you can just put down your colors. You could abbreviate burnt sienna, burnt umber, um, alizarin crimson, uh, maybe some cerulean blue. And if you put that in a folder, then you have it. You can go back and reference that. And then if we try another exercise with a different style of brick or other types of stone, you can come up with just different small compositions. You put them in a folder under, you know, again, you could label it any way you want. You could take pictures of it and store it on your phone even. Instead of putting it into a physical folder, you could take a photo of it if you have a folder in your phone. You know, you could put an art folder, and then in your art folder you can have different, you know, uh, landscapes, seascapes, uh, streetscapes, and you could put this one under maybe like a streetscapes folder, and then you would have your, um, you know, some of your notes on that. So you can take pictures of your notes that you do on some watercolor paper. And then it's, it's a great reference, and this way, again, you don't have to keep rethinking things over and over. You sort of feel at ease because, you know, you have some stuff kind of stockpiled, a little bit of a notebook and so forth of uh, things you've already done, and then it's a lot easier. Uh, I've done that for years, and it helps a lot. Um, so we're going to continue here, and again, I didn't paint every stone. I kind of just skip around, and some spots I'll make stones, some spots just interesting color variations. And this makes a great effect too. And if you want to really get super uh, accurate, you could do it that way as well. You know, you're the artist, you, you kind of create your paintings and the feel you want with your art and your paintings. And some, some of you might like more detail or more accuracy. That's fine too. And uh, the only thing here I, I think is just once you go in with a wash like this here, um, you would have you would have to let it more or less dry before you go in and do more uh, of the rectangular and square shapes. Does that make sense? Because we kind of know once we put down a wash on watercolor paper, you only have like a minute or two to add in some more paint and water, you know, water and paint on your brush, and then then you'd have to kind of pretty much let it completely dry or almost completely dry and. Sometimes I'll use a blow dryer and to make that process quicker, but for the most part, we'll leave this go here, this, this part. We'll let that dry a bit, and we'll just continue on. And This is brownstone, so I leave some whites in there for the stone joints, the uh, mortar joints. So you want to leave some mortar joints in there too. Again, doesn't have to be everywhere, just spots here and there. And it kind of just, those few little indications of those white lines, horizontal and vertical, gives you that feel of the mortar joints for the uh, stonework. So that um, helps a lot. And again, we'll go back in here, and then we can move a, at a little faster pace. You know, we can... I'll go around the windows and doors here. So around the windows and doors we lizard and crimson, burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, kind of a mixture of the warm colors, the earth colors. And we'll keep going here and that little bit of um Yellow ochre is war kind of a warm color, like that nice yellow warm color for the stonework. This is was sunset when I was painting this, and uh, the sun was behind me, so the sun was actually shining behind me in the west. And again, you c we can make up, you know, we can get a good... We can really zip along here, again... The only thing here is when I go at this faster pace through this section, I'm sort of missing the stonework, the mortar joints, those white joints there. So if you're going to do more of a faster approach of painting, you'll lose some of those details. So depends on your style. 
If I was on location, I would continue to paint kind of slower and leave those white mortar joints and try to get more detail in it. But we can also move at a quicker pace. Some people like to paint a little faster. So if your style is you like to go a little quicker with your painting and you're not uh, going to take as much time, that's fine too. Then you'll just have more of a, um, a little bit of a different look. Again, you won't get those finer white lines maybe in the... You could also add a touch of uh, some white, maybe titanium white paint. You could add in a few uh, whites of those joints with some white paint. Maybe we'll do that. That's also a way to um, re, uh, recapture some, some of those whites for the, uh, the mortar joints in the stonework. That looks pretty good. And let's let's do it. Let's let's get a blow dryer. Now, when I was out painting this on location, it was really warm out. It was probably like around 85, 90 degrees. It was um, around four o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock in the afternoon, I would say. And the sun was setting, but it was still a really hot day. So everything I was doing was drying real fast. So um, that's something to note too. It depends on how warm or how cool your working environment is when you're working with watercolor. So here, um, it's a little cooler in the studio, so it takes a little more time for this to dry. So we'll get the blow dryer. Now here, um, this this feels really dry. This is good, so we can go in and do some more details over the over this first uh, wash. So here we're doing a glazing technique. So here we're doing a glazing technique where we do a lighter lighter wash first, and then we're going to go over now with some darker uh, tonal values. And I'll mix in some more and. And then I would, I would mix up different, a little bit of different colors within this, this well here, just so we have. And you can work around in a sense. You can make larger stones, smaller ones, square and rectangles is all we're looking for really on this type of design, with um, the brownstone. And again, it's just a matter of um, those those rectangle and square shapes. And we can make them, you know, here and there. We. We don't have to actually do every every single stone, just you know here and there. Some can be lighter, some darker. I think a good key to remember is this a lot of variation. If we do a lot of variation, it tends to look really good because it just sort of has that pleasing effect of lots of interesting things going on. Um, and sometimes too, we could try this and do more of a simple approach where we really don't do any of the stones. We just maybe mix up a color just like we're using here, mix up a color, a wash, and keep the colors, you know, separated somewhat. And then we could just go in and do one wash and let that be uh, 
the final wash, the first wash. Um, that would be an interesting effect too. And then I would just continue on over here with um, the roofing, the roof over here. The roof is mostly a gray and blue slate with a little bit of um, browns and reds. So I I just continue on with that same thing, and I can mix some different blues: cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. And again, the there's a lot of detail in the roof, so I won't worry about that. I'll get that detail look by just doing lots of variation of different colors and textures and it's mostly uh, we could have a little green in there too. That's a little bit of sap green I mixed in. We could get into maybe um, we could make a grayish color, blue. French ultramarine blue added into that brown and red mix gives us like a a grayish kind of look. We could do a little more of that. That would be French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of burnt sienna with more of a, more of the blue in there, and that gives us a nice gray color like we have over here. So we'd want to match that. And again here I have only a little bit of time to keep working on this and then it's just going to get to the point where I need to let that dry and we'll let that dry now over here on this roof side, this over, over here. And that's pretty good so I hope this is a real um, interesting kind of um, composition to do where we can work on some textures and stone and this is actually brownstone of course as we said it's a brownstone train station and it's got a brownstone chimney so I started this on location and then I brought it back to the studio and we're continuing to work on this in the studio and it's a lot of fun to paint that way too if you can start something in the field outdoors you can get the colors that you like the selections and get the drawing in and then you can come back to the studio and just continue working on everything and you have your colors pretty much. If you're, if you need to make some notes in the field, you can always, when you're, uh, let's say, um, out in the field painting, you can make some notes on the colors you're using. And then when you come back to the studio, you would have this too as well. So it, it can be something where when you bring this back to the studio, you can work on it there. You have your notes or you can save these notes um, in a folder or on your phone or your uh uh, your uh, electronic device um, for, for ideas when you're uh, painting, creating some paintings. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope everyone will enjoy uh, doing a little bit of some scenes outdoors, architecture. Again, um, it's a lot of fun to um, use lots of colors, mix everything. It, it gives you a really pleasing effect of a lot of interesting things going on at one time. But again, if you're not much on details and you don't like you you don't like to mix a lot of paint and so forth and you can always take this idea and then just kind of simplify it a little more and just make some more simple washes and do larger simple washes um, if that's the style you like and you know you could actually do this in two washes the roof would be one color and then your building would be the secondary color and then once you have that onto the paper then you can go in and just do some some details or maybe a second glazing of just some maybe a, just a one or two or three here and there of small rectangular shapes that would give you the feel of the the stone the brown stone and then the roof you could do a little bit of splashing maybe um, on top of the second um, on top of the first glazing and then you can maybe just add some lines just for the feel of the roof with the uh, the slate roof with the long lines, the parallel lines, the, the horizontal lines, and then maybe a few little markings of some uh, vertical lines for the, the slate, uh, the pieces of slate that are on the roof. And that's pretty much it. You'll have a perfect um, uh, architectural 
composition and painting and beautiful art and uh, also we'll have a little bit of notes uh, for when we uh, create a painting of something similar. All right, everyone, have fun with this, enjoy, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.